Okay. Then go. So, hi all, Theban partners, friends, followers of our Theban webinars. We'd like to welcome you this uh, afternoon to our specific uh, webinar with the main content, Smart Home Solution. My name is Amal Löffler. I'm Head of Technical Support and Training, assisted by my colleague Christoph Kinsler, who is doing and giving trainings as well, in front of the camera and in real live workshops as well. So what's the main content of today? I introduced it's a smart home solution. In our case, we talk about Luxor Living, a nice, high, interesting uh, system. And before we get started, I'd like to give you a reasonable hint. So you do probably discover on the right hand side of your screen a drop box. And in this box, you can put your questions in and Christopher working in the dashboard in the background will give you the reasonable answers accordingly. Okay, so don't hesitate to get in touch with us. And uh, so let's get started with it. So we, I'd like to introduce you now the products. So yes, thank you so much for the screen. So we talk today about building innovation, smart home solutions and smart home solution, what it is. Okay, you will get it in a few seconds because I will start a small fancy uh, yeah, video which describes a little bit more about uh, the main content. Our content of today is finally the function of smart home solution in general, the advantages for installers, so your argumentation to the installer, or in terms of installer, the argumentation to the end users, finally. What you have to care about the wiring, it's quite simple, it's just a few words about, and then definitely the product insights, so some details to the products, and last but not least, I will add a short practical exercise, a practical demo on our uh, demo case here in the background on the right hand side of myself. Yeah, uh, to, to grab, to catch this uh, smart home solution, I think that you argue to the, to the clients, finally, you need to have some, let's say, insights at the beginning. So it is finally a KNX based system. So that means the talk, the communication in the background is an international standard, which is absolutely open and sustainable. And Luxor Living as well is a reliable hardware based on KNX devices, which are really long, long time in the market, which have a long lasting hardware. We do support, for instance, all kind of uh, all kinds. So that means uh, the voice control for Alexa and Google Assists, for instance, for ambient assistant living or so. We do have some cloud communication to operate remotely, for instance, or to do some reasonable updates, however. So this is what we uh, what we can offer, what we can do with uh, our smart home solution. So most important is KNX based, international standard and safe. I will start at the beginning with a short video and I will share it with you. What exactly do we mean by smart? Looking cool? Showing that we can handle any situation? Keeping with the times, keeping a low sigh on the future, knowing what's coming and being well prepared to meet it. Nobody can harm you. All of the above are all true. So what does this mean for our home? It's cool as well. It's with the times. Intelligent, proactive, forward-looking. We have programmed it to do exactly what we want. That is a smart home. So people think they already have a smart home. It's because they bought an LED lamp at a DIY shop and they can switch it on and off with their smartphone. There are lots of gimmicks like this out there. You might be able to control them automatically, but unfortunately, you can't network them. Whatever kind of apps or cloud-based tools they use, they're not truly cool or smart. Smart is when everything is linked together. Smart is when the light comes on because it's going dark outside and the blinds go down and the heating comes on at the same time. 
Smart is when the weather station shows you that a storm is coming and attracts the awning to be on the safe side. Smart is when your daughter's having a party and you get the light show going before the guests arrive. Things get smarter if your daughter's going to a party and you invite the best woman in the world to a candlelit dinner at home. Your wife. What's even smarter than that when you're as smart as Einstein? But you know you don't have to be a genius to install, program, and operate the smart home system, just like looks or living. It doesn't get much smarter than this. It'll make you smart, it'll make you smart, and most importantly, it'll keep the two of you smart. It'll keep things smart when you and your family aren't at home. It'll keep things smart when you want to integrate new gadgets. And it'll keep things smart as we move from today to tomorrow, from the present to the future. Because looks or living is based on KIs, an open standard that can keep up with any developments that come along. That might sound like it's getting a bit technical, but it's smart, super smart. Because virtually every provider uses KIs, which means you've spent your money wisely. Your investment is safe. So you can sit back and relax. So what now? Live a bit smarter. Program your home for comfort. With Looks on Living, the mother of all smart home systems. Smarter Living with Taven. So, hopefully you uh, have some, had some fun with this uh, short introduction, but I think it's uh, covering a lot of the ideas of a real smart home solution. And, oh, sorry. Stop, Stop this here. So, sorry for this short interruption. So sometimes you have some goosebusters. So finally, so um, let's go ahead. So what is finally smart? So you discovered some good ideas, I think. Forward-looking um, integration of uh, future uh, functionalities, abilities, necessities, however, is possible. But what is important as well? Safety, the safetyness of this uh, smart home solution as well. So that means uh, we tested it. The VDE laboratory in uh, Germany tested the app, the communication system, that means the IP1 you will discover later on, and the entire looks a living system according to safetyness in terms of um, external attacks, external unauthorized accesses, and so on, and we passed successfully all these testings. So this gives you, finally, your client, your customer, the end user, a rather good feeling that the money is well invested. So when it comes, finally, to the integrator, so the integrator will definitely ask you, so what is your argument? Why shall I use, why shall I buy a Taban Lux or Living smart home solution? Uh, you should need to know Finally, it is a KNX-based communication. It's not a proprietary communication, which you find plenty in the worldwide market. They just communicating in their own language. You have no chance to integrate it in a whole system or to integrate other things uh, in totally. So KNX is based on international standards and uh, according to ISO as well. And uh, due to that, so we are open, open for the future. It's a very little wiring, so that means you have just to wire point to point, like you know from KNX. I take just uh, one of these uh, samples here. You give me shortly the camera, please. So that means, for instance, each of these devices is equipped with these uh, terminals here, even the um, push button interface, which you see here, for instance, here as well, you will get the contacts, the terminals for the communication to the bus. So it, then it looks like that. And you have just to loop the cable from red to red, from black to black, you loop it through and that's it. 
And on this communication, you get all the data receiving and sending in the entire bus system. What is allowed, what is approved, you are allowed to wire all these in a kind of line cabling in one line. So you loop it just through. You can do the wiring in terms of, let's say, like a tree. Yeah, you can have some accesses here, left and right inside. However, everything is fine. But what you have to avoid is the token ring. So that means you aren't allowed to make a ring or a loop, however you want uh, to describe it. This is no go. Yeah, but line, tree, and all the things around are possible. So that means it's a very little um, equipment which you need and a very little time to do the wiring among these, these components, these system components in smart home solution. The durability of the system. Uh, I mentioned it at the beginning. All these appliances here are based on a kind of KNX hardware. So that means our KNX hardware is really robust and has passed many, many tests and uh, they definitely have a long life expectations. And uh, this hardware we took, especially when we started this development with Luxor Living, and this is integrated. So that means you will discover later on some figures and that's a, a reason why we use this really strong and reliable hardware for this new solution as well. Future proof, so that means we are open for the future. You can operate later on, you will see, with iOS, with Android, or even with your Windows-based computer, laptop, however, you can operate, you can manage your entire smart home system. The keypads, which you discover here, for instance, so anytime gives you the option to on and off, to dim up and down in several stages, you can do. Without any programming, just you have to apply 230 volts to the reasonable uh, appliances, to the devices, and then you can operate manually. So what you, what you need more? So in case, worst case condition, you lose, for instance, uh, the communication to your smart home solution, yeah, but the power further on is existing, it's there. Anytime the end user can operate manually on the keypads, on and off, dimming up and down, whatever. And the operation, even in the, um, uh, in the app, um, is really intuitively, we have to say. For the end user, it's important you discover here, oh, there are some similarities to the installers, because what is in the perspective of the end user important? I have an excellent functionality which covers my needs. What is important as well? The reliability, because when I spend my money well, so I want to have a long lasting system, yeah? so that uh, products are really reliable, they are robust and really uh, with a long lifespan the very little wiring. So you discover this, uh, I wrote it as well in the for the installer, but for the end user means, so it's a matter of money. So less wiring means, or simple wiring means, less time to do the wiring. So that means he has to spend just a little money for the installation. It's not complicated, for instance. This future proof, yeah, for the end user is as well important. So I have just a system which is open for the future. Anytime I can do some uh, new product, can add some new uh, products, for instance, it's an international standard. And uh, due to the fact that we do have here for the system a KNX certified database, and that's the reason why you discover here the KNX logo as well. So we do have anytime the chance to swap in a certain instant, if needed, this smart home solution looks a living to a full professional tool to the ETS and configure it as a real KNX project. And then you have the international standard, you are open for the worldwide solutions and options which you probably need, which you probably desire for your home in, don't know, 20 years or so. But we will update definitely regularly our product range. That's the reason why it is named Luxor Living. So it's living, we are living with some progress, needs, requirements from the market. And from time to time, we update our product range with some new products. Yeah, that's the reason why. 
uh, these, let's say, large keypads as well. This is the argumentation for the end user either. So because they have doubts. So what if the power supply is disconnected, is probably destroyed in an yeah, unexpected event, however? So what if now I'm sitting in the darkness? So you have to give the reasonable answer. No, you aren't. As long as you have the power 230 applied to the system in on each of these Dean Rail uh, solutions, Dean Rail actuators, for instance, anytime you can manual operate on off, dimming up and down, lower or rise the, the blinds, for instance, starting or opening the heating or closing the heating, for instance, manually, you can. And that's the flexibility. And if you probably compare it to other systems, which you find plenty in the market worldwide, so there you discover pretty often black boxes. So that means you have a Dean Rail uh, installed solution, proprietary probably, so then you are out of the game to do an upgrade or to extend to, let's say, a, a network of different functionalities. And neither you can operate manually with a black box. It is difficult, yeah, because you do not have any buttons, you do not have any displays accordingly. So due to that, it is argumentation finally for you as well. And the profile, and this is, uh, I think this is one of uh, important things which uh, you need to know. Uh, you can do the profile as well, the profiling, profile management, uh, especially when it comes to the app control. So you have a family of uh, four people, father, mother, and two kids, for instance, and you can give them different rights, different rights of operation. Yeah, Probably you, as you and your wife, master, uh, of all, so you are allowed, you are applied to uh, yeah, to do everything, you to manage everything. But probably your kids are uh, small, age of uh, eight or ten, however, able to let's say handle uh, app control. But probably they are not aware about some specific let's say details, and so you can give some restrictions to their operation on their app, for instance. So that's meant with these let's say profile management for family members. You can lock it with a PIN code, sure, for unauthorized access. And as well, and this is not highlighted here, but I do it with uh, my words. So as well for, let's say, existing systems, and you want to extend your home, for instance, under the roof, you need some space for a third children or so, a third child. So probably you do not have any wires or you have no chance to rewire, however, due to the structure of the building, so then we do have um, RF components, RF actuators and push button sensors as well. And uh, then it becomes important when we talk about RF or safety in general, that this communication is safe. And we do support these uh, safety aspects, especially in our actuators, RF-based remote control. Yeah, and I think this is something which is important and uh, back to this, let's say, reliability. I want to to uh, to catch you a little bit uh, with this uh, content here. Um, why? I, I was talking about some reliability and some robust robustness of uh, the relays which we are using or the triacs which we are using and why we do so. And this is just a content which covers not just smart home. It covers as well the KNX products. It covers as well in the controllers, in the time controllers, brightness controllers, and so on, because all the, let's say, current lights which you control are mainly LED lights. And probably you know, probably not, end users mostly does not know that, but um, LED lights are creating some troubles in terms of inrushes. And uh, I just put here three, four slides just uh, to give you, to share some reasonable experience with us and uh, I will tell you some more about. So you see here, you have a, a six watt uh, dimmable light, which is about the equivalent to 60 watts of glow lamps. So roughly one tenth is uh, so the, the factor of calculation. You see here, you have here, uh, let's say the consumption uh, is uh, 0.0, let's say it's three amps. It's rather less, it's absolutely perfect and brilliant. But uh, when it comes to the first initial start, so the dimming, start of the dimming and so on, you discover here as well. Um, so you discover here almost six amps of inrush. It's by far tremendously higher than you calculate. 
but not expected. And now tell me, so how many end users finally does know exactly these values? And that's the reason why we are using really strong relays in our actuators. Nevertheless, KNX, Smart Home Looks for Living, Timers, the TR series, or the Lunars, for instance, or the motion and presence detectors, exactly because of this, we put specific, high sophisticated technology inside, which can handle this kind of high inrushes. Even another example, so this small Geo, uh, Geo 10 light, which you mainly find uh, somewhere in elevators or in lift lobbies and so on. So you discover here as well, this small fancy light requires just per piece 2.5 amps. So I can imagine how many you can directly apply on a relay and what effect finally it has on a relay in terms of durability, lifespan, and so on. Even this kind of lines, so you know these typical lights, 60 by 60 size-wise, uh, which you rather often find in offices, in uh, municipalities, in corridors, schools, and so on, this uh, equipped with, uh, let's say, drivers, sometimes they are inbuilt here in the panels, some of them are externally, uh, so external drivers, and you discover here even 20 watts of these lights create about 7.15 amps of inrush. With the external driver, you discover such like that. I'm not kidding you. I'm not uh, kidding you. This is reality, yeah. Just to share these uh, values, these have been done. This case, not in our VDE laboratory, which we have indoor here in, uh, in our company. This uh, investigation was done by the University in Eindhoven. <clears throat> so that means a totally independent authority. They are, this is a specific uh, university technique, and they confirmed as well what happens here in the background. A small glitch, a small high inrush, which you do have, we are talking about some hundred microseconds. It's rather short, but tremendously intensive. And this finally stresses such kind of relays, which you do have here in motion detectors, in presence detectors, or in controllers, or in, for instance, uh, yeah, KNX products. Even so, we do have here these typical decorative lights for offices. Yeah, So you discover here 31 watt of LEDs, we do have here inrush current, which is around 2.26.5 uh, 2, 2, amps. So then 26.5 amps. This measuring we did in our laboratory here, and we have been really surprised on our own. Yeah, And this is a factor of stress on a relay. And that's the reason why, now I stop again here. So that's why we really believe and we trust in our hardware because we take this all into consideration during the development and we want to make you the end user your clients happy with long-lasting products now you may say hey come to the point so what is possible finally with uh, looks or living or with a smart home solution so what i can really do with it so i listed up here some of the functions i think most of the functions are covered probably not 100 percent but 90 percent around so the typical functions which finally are desired by end users. So the typical lights, switching, dimming, staircase function, blinking, pre-warning, and so on. Then further on, dimming scenarios and so on. So all these things uh, we can cover with Luxor Living. And uh, you can store when we when it comes to scenarios, we can um, yeah, we can create different scenes yeah, individually, which can cover the light switching, the light dimming, uh, can cover as well positioning of shutters and blinds even though we can integrate the heating so what desired uh, warmth you want to have when you watch tv if a soccer game or so starts uh, in the afternoon in the late afternoon however so all these things you can do what are the expectations finally when it comes to the shading in buildings yeah so if you have blinds awnings for instance or so so you want to have this automatic shading in smart home home which is thinking which is considering things happening around uh, the building. So you want to have a certain automatism. And this automatism finally is automatic shading control. So you can run on, run out uh, just uh, the Venetian blinds. You can position them in uh, the unlikely in when uh, event of wind or rain or frost, however. So then you 
retrack, for instance, uh, the awnings uh, that they are not, uh, let's say, yeah, destroyed by a heavy storm or such like that. If you want to have a shading, so which position, for instance, the blinds should take, uh, so how lower you want to have them, how the positioning of the slats uh, are there, you can do this as well according to a time frame. So in the time from till, you want to have a specific event. You can do some groupings. Groupings, uh, so that means you can group some lights together, some switched lights, or you can group some switched and dimmed lights or just dimmed lights, or you can group a combination of lights and, for instance, shutters, however, or all shutters together or, or blinds together. And with one press, you have a central switch up and down, for instance, if you want to lower all together and not separate. This is possible finally. So all these things, we are open. Even the heating, you can do some grouping if you have a huge uh, living room, huge ballroom, let's say, yeah, and you have more than one, let's say, heating circle, uh, however, so uh, then you can group this together and you have one controller for, let's say, multiple uh, heating uh, channels or heating groups, however, so then you can do this accordingly or can, for instance, start up, uh, let's say, or open with a link your mail account. Uh, when you enter your home, you have a panel, nice panel in your corridor, you touch on it and you can open immediately then uh, how is uh, what is incoming emails or so or as well with this link function you can implement as well a camera a camera system giving you feedback what is uh, what's up in the garden uh, your child's are playing there or your gardener for instance is busy or not however and uh, all these things you can integrate yeah so with this link you just copy the link in a specific uh, area of the app and then you can call it up immediately so a rather high flexibility in the application and in the function as well as we support sure this uh, function of panic so if you discover during the night time some let's say yeah some noises which are a little bit let's say unusual yeah so glass broken or such like that uh, dog barking however so then one push on a push button for instance and then all lights in the garden and in the surrounding are popping up for instance then you can make sure yourself if uh, everything is okay or if it's just a cat, a cat of the neighbor who is uh, yeah destroying something however so then with one push button a specific amount of lights are popping up or if you close uh, this panic function again closing these lights again to their former uh, yeah position let's say this way or if you're leaving home yeah so you have not to run through all the rooms with a central off you can integrate and you can define specify so who should participate on this central off function when you're leaving home you can do it by a push button you can integrate in your main door with a contact for instance and when you lock your door uh, one locker is okay if you lock two times so then with a with a second lock for instance you close a contact and this contact gives you the command so all lights or heatings or whatever will be switched off as long as you are off your smart home. Anytime like uh, I dis dis have described, manual operation on uh, your uh, appliances or your devices are possible. No problem at all. And uh, the point 18 is, is something which is really, I think it is, it is a treasure. It is a benchmark, especially when you come into touch as an electrician. So for instance, I did the programming for a specific project. Now, um, today, uh, tomorrow, I'm going to retire, to be retired finally, and I probably was lazy. I did not give the copy to the end user, for instance, and uh, you are coming around, popping up in this project, and the end user is asking you politely, so can you add some further, some additional functions in my smart home? then you have a problem, a serious problem, because you do not have any uh, details about that. And probably I am retired, I'm somewhere in the South Sea or however, difficult to catch me, yeah? And But you have to do the, the, the modification. If the end user knows his password to his project of his smart home, and you type in later on this password, and you import, you start an import process, I will show you the menu, so then you can import the full, the 100% full project of Luxor Living 
on your computer and you can start from this point and add some additional functions, components, or do you, you are able to do some modifications as well. So this is something which is really extraordinary and none, so far as we know, none of all these other, let's say, um, systems in the market called smart home can do that. Cannot. Then you are off the game in this case. When it comes to heating and cooling, for instance, sure, we support heating and cooling. We support uh, heating and cooling according to time. So that means we can put a time frame in the background. So start the heating early morning, 5.30 or so, so that you have cozy, uh, cozy warm, however. Uh, in general, eight, uh, uh, 11 o'clock in the uh, afternoon, so you're going general to bed, so you lower the temperature a little bit, especially, let's say, radiators, floor heating, under under floor heatings, I would be a little bit uh, careful, frank speaking, so it doesn't so much sense, but radiators definitely make sense. Like mentioned, uh, the thing with, uh, let's say, client management or user management, uh, is one of the part of the essential part of uh, this we can do as well a so-called presence simulation so that means hopefully in the closer future we can travel again and uh, due to that so you can set i'm from till i'm off for holiday for spending a long weekend however and during this period of time i want to have some let's say presence simulation so that means we um we can start some blinds on off, we can start some movement of the shutters, of the blinds, however, to give to the outside the, let's say, the, the feedback, the appearance, okay, probably there is somebody indoor, yeah. So just as, let's say, uh, an additional perspective of safetyness. The hardware, like I told, is uh, anytime convertible from uh, Smart Home Looks for Living to a full KNX project. Here I have to add a specific note. <clears throat> so if you do have here in this uh, component here, it's fine so far. So uh, if you do have here the Luxo Living actuator with a specific KNX certified database, and you take this hardware and um, you download from our webpage our full KNX database for, in this case, a two-fold uh, LED dimmer, so then you will have, um, yeah, no no access you have no permission because it's locked <clears throat> you can just take for these components the database of looks living looks living database works you can integrate all the main functions are uh, in even if you use it in the knx project but let's say the big numbers of application settings of communication objects and so on is just given to the real full knx actuators, sensors, and controllers. So there's a, a short, let's say, or small restriction in the operation, in the handling, however, and uh, this, you, I think you need to know. Yeah. Then, okay, I talked as well. So the VDE, the safety approval, so we get it again. I think it's some which is really a treasure, which is important. And we do support with the cloud management uh, that we can do the management uh, through the cloud, so that needs some updates and so on, we can do through the clouds. We can copy or save, let's say, these uh, client management data in the cloud, so probably your daughter got uh, yesterday a new mobile and you want just to have the same access, the same abilities of the operation of the smart home, of her, your daughter's smart home, for instance, you just have to link your mobile to the cloud and then she has all her, let's say, access points, all her permissions again. So this is not a big deal to integrate or to implement a new mobile uh, in such a system. So in case of replacement, however, anytime you can lock the system. So for instance, if your mobile is going lost, so you can block it so that nobody unauthorized can, for instance, have access to your system. I think this is uh, rather important and uh, I think more than 10 arguments towards an installer, towards an end user, and probably it gives you a really good idea so how powerful finally this smart home looks or living system finally is. Don't forget, I want to add this, especially when we come to, let's say, project business. So for instance, we do have here 
a project which is a, a six uh, flat multiple home six families living there and uh, you have here probably nice uh, terraces or balconies or whatever and you have shadings all around and uh, so basically and this is something which is a unique point so in general each family needs to have such kind of a weather station to measure their wind their let's say impacts of the natural daylight the temperature and whatnot with this specific combination, the Luxor Living M100 and M130. So we do have here a solution, just one sensor out, and we do have here exactly this, um, let's say, individual adjustment or usage finally of each family, because this one here is in each of the flats and the weather station, which you see on the right hand side top. And this one is just one unit in the on the entire building somewhere on the reasonable um, rooftop uh, position to the right direction so this catches all the natural let's say meteor datas and here here you get the datas finally in your home and uh, then you can set which brightness threshold you want to have to get started the shading for instance or which wind speed shall finally track the, um, the blinds up in case of uh, the event of a heavy uh, storm or so. So you can do it really individually. And this just networked, linked finally by the bus cabling. This is just a single communi uh, communication you discover here in this drawing. This is a yellow cable. And this yellow cable here is just looped from device to the next device. But it is not linked to the communication in the different single family flats so that means there is no chance at all to yeah to 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 scan for instance the applications or the statuses for instance of the neighbor uh, the, the flat in the neighborhood however because this is a not standardized communication it's not knx based and not related to the bus communication which we do have here totally separated and that's, I think it's a good uh, yeah, argumentation. I think you need to know. And so there is no problem at all. Each of these family flats are, or the system of uh, Luxor Living is linked to the router, which is in each of these uh, family flats. And you know what you are doing in general if you have a router. So you type in your personal password. And if your neighbor does not know this password, there is no chance at all to catch any types of uh, data, to do some, let's say, Ghostbusters with your system, however, because you do not get the access to it, yeah? And the weather station is totally separated from this entire bus system. At this stage, probably one question pops up, which was not highlighted currently. So how many of these Luxor Living smart home appliances, devices I can add? So in total, we talk about 64 devices. For a single family home or even for industrial building, more than sufficient, I will suppose. So a few more details now about, let's say the product itself. So what, what do I need minimum? I need to have, for instance, a power supply, which could be, for instance, this M64, 64 gives, gives you the indication, okay, 640 milliamps. So that means you support 64 devices in this, let's say, installation. What is the IP1? The IP1 is finally the communication from your software to do the setup, to do the configuration to the system. So that means we need it minimum to download finally the program afterwards you can take it out no problem but what is not possible afterwards to operate with the app so due to app due to them there are some further functions inside i will describe you later on a little bit more detailed then we need some let's say different actuators so that means uh, switching dimming shading heating or probably integration of any kind of window contact push buttons whatever and we do have here as well some of the new products, the Eon series or the push button series, which I will later on describe you more in detail. 
So all these components are just linked together in such a way and they are communicating, sharing information exactly on these communication lines. For those who want to have, let's say, some um, voice control, so by Alexa Talk, by Google Talk, so what we need, we need to have one of these systems, we need the reasonable account, we need to have the reasonable yeah, setup finally, and we need to be, let's say, um, yeah, uh, configured, we need to have a, a, a password and access finally to the Theban cloud system, and we need finally to set our Theban app, our Luxo Play app into cloud mode. So that means we communicate directly through the cloud, through the cloud to the router, and through the router we do have access to Alexa Talk or to Google Talk. However, if you wanna know more about, so this is not our main topic of today, but if you'd like to know more about that, so uh, if you, okay, then I have, to start this for a second, I'll give you a reasonable hint. So if you want to know or to learn more about, so <clears throat> you will hear, come on. So three, two, one. Yes, so I open here the English version. English language, service, training courses. And if you open the training courses, first of all, you will discover some, let's say, further heading um, webinars, which we do have. One of these was uh, in February, uh, Luxo Living Voice Control. Okay, you have missed, sorry. But if you scroll further down, you see here, missed webinars and you discover here for instance if you want to need more if you want to learn more about integration of ip cameras for instance or if you want to learn more about control with alexa and so on you will find here some real reasonable good hints how to do so so we do not practice it today because we do not have that much time but uh, if you want always welcome highly appreciated to have a look in this uh, sector here of services, scroll down, and then you will find some missed webinars. Not all, but some of them. Yeah, and um, what we do have here as well, so in total, so I will now go through the different applications, the different, um, the different products. So this is the right slide. So we do have here a wide range of, let's say, actuators. And you remember my words, 64 appliances. And if I take, for instance, just this one here, the um, S16, so that means I have 16 channels, 16 relays inside, and this is just one single unit. So now just think about, yeah, how many lights I do have here in my flat, plus garden and so on. So probably you need two, probably best case three of them, and you can cover everything with it. And then we are talking just about three of these appliances which you need or devices which you need to manage all the switched functions in your home. So you see, 64 is rather, rather much um, of, let's say, abilities what you can cover. So even we did a lot of industrial buildings as well. So because of these, let's say, abilities we do have. Starting from four-fold switching, eight-fold switching, 16-fold switching, you discover here per channel, 600 watts pure LED control, so optimized for such. In the event of that, for instance, you want to extend your system, you do know, you do want, for instance, to control your um, light in, in the living room, so these standing lights, for instance, from the socket. So you can hide this uh, S1, for instance, here on the left-hand side. You can hide it underneath or behind the socket, and then you can control them remotely. If you switch it or if you dim it, it's up to you. However, or you discover here as well, the switching actuators, RF, secure. And this, finally, here you miss probably the bus communication. Now, that's the reason why. So RF, you do not have, let's say, the wiring, the chance to link to the wiring, to the existing wiring. So for that purpose, you need the media coupler. 
So the media coupler itself is linked finally to your uh, smart home system, sends on the frequency of 868 the communication, the telegrams, to the actuators which are in the area, in your building or probably in the garden, however, and you get the commands switching or dimming or heating, whatever, just remotely. This you can do in a free field. We talk about roughly 50 meters, best, best circumstances, depends on the structure of your building. Inside probably you have restrictions of uh, 15, 20 meters. However, it always uh, is related to the structure. If you have concrete walls, if you have some things which are shielding, for instance, uh, such kind of RF communications, but roughly at the average. So outdoor free field, we talk about 50 meters. When we talk about the LED dimming, so currently we do support, let's say, this universal dimming. Why we do have here, nevertheless, if we talk about the professional uh, light in industry, in schools, in buildings, and so on, we talk in general about LED lights. And uh, in privacy, we do have here, especially, meanwhile, the replacement from halogen lights, from glow lamps to LED lights. And um, so due to that, we have optimized LED dimmers. The two-fold, extremely powerful, 400 watts. Here's a typing mistake. Yeah, here's a typing mistake. Sorry for that. Here we talk about 400 watts each channel. This is, uh, sorry, this was my fault, but discovered immediately and modified immediately. So, and then we do have here the four-fold dimmer, two-fold, 200 watts each channel. And 200 watts LED is rather, rather much uh, for private home or even for industrial light control. The LED, the dimming curves, we have some available, which you can just call up. So last but not least, optimized for LED control. As well, we do have the same in terms of, um, in terms of the um, uh, flush-mounted dimmers. We do have here the flush mounted D1 LED dimmer. We do have here at the same the RF, so the remote controlled dimmer. And we do have here, this is currently not uh, discovered probably, neither here nor here. We do have here options like you discover here in this real uh, actuator. You discover here some cables, and these cables, they are just clicked in. So that means you can have here as well, let's say X, oh yeah, thank you so much to the control panel. So you, you discover here, you have here two binary inputs. You do not need, but if you want, you can just plug it in and here you apply between the black and the brown or the black and the red one, for instance, here, you apply here just a push button or window contact and you can have a further function or you just drive, in this case, the dimmer to dim up, to dim down directly. As well, or you discover here as well, there is a temperature probe. You can integrate as well a temperature probe on the channel two. So that means you need just these two cables, the red and the black, <clears throat> and you apply here exactly these small fancy temperature probe, and you can give the temperature to the system, and you can drive, for instance, a heating actuator just as a controller highly flexible yeah when it comes to the shading we have here two uh, options either four fold shading so four channels for blinds awnings for instance or rollers however or the j8 so that means eight fold shading and uh, awnings however to control the blinds in a reasonable way same stuff we do have here for flush mounted twisted pair so um, cable based or as well RF based in combination with the media coupler. Um, I want to add uh, some uh, things about these, uh, let's say cable, these binary inputs here. You can extend them, in this case, to 15 meters from the point where this uh, flush mounted actuator is installed. I think extremely powerful, huh? isn't it? So when it comes to the heating, so heating is required in some areas, and uh, if so, so we do have two options. Either we do have here the H6, six, what does it mean? Six rooms or six uh, heating, let's say, uh, circles. 
um, heating uh, lines, however, and on each of these actuator channels, we can apply maximum three of these Theban thermal valves. So that means if you have really a huge uh, area which you have to, to heat, to control, and probably one line of the heating, underfloor heating, or uh, let's say radiators heating, is probably not enough. So you can apply on one channel two of this. Or we do have here the specific one, if you have, uh, let's say, a, a really modern building, a modern project, villa or such like that, uh, where you have just under floor warm water heating or such. So then we can apply on this specific design, which fits perfectly in the underfloor heating pipe system. So then you can apply here as well per channel three of these valves. So ideal for the heating control. If you want to hide the heating control, you do have here these heating actuators. Again, these uh, twisted pair, cable-based, RF-based, and you can apply here as well these temperature probe. And if you do so, you apply this small fancy sensor to one of these binary inputs, in this case, the input two, and you set this one to a temperature controller. The temperature gives the controller the ambient temperature or the room temperature, which is tapped somewhere. So then this actuator is a controller on its own. To adjust your desired temperatures in the room or in the area, you have just the option to set, to modify with the app or with a Windows-based computer, for instance. Ideal if you want to hide it, ideal if you want to avoid that unauthorized people do some modifications in the temperature settings. Perfect, small and perfect in the application power. Yeah, so um, when it comes to these, let's say, products like, um, yeah, we need to integrate a motion detector. And you know, motion detectors, they aren't mostly, uh, they aren't potential free. They're mostly, you have to apply 230 volt and the relay output is uh, 230. So exactly the power which you apply to the device and you want to integrate such a motion detector, for instance, in such a system, you need a specific binary input, which is in our case, the B6. Starting from 10 volt up to 240 volt, AC or DC, doesn't matter, per input, totally independent. So it's up to you what you want to apply. And so we integrate this, let's say, trigger, which we get from the motion detector or from a window contact or whatnot. This is the way how it works. The difference, finally, you see here, this is the push button interface, small, fancy. So for instance, when we do have here, in this case, this uh, small, um, this small push button interface, you see it's rather, rather tiny. You have here in this case, the T8. So that means in total, I can apply here eight different push buttons or eight different window contacts, whatever. And here, from this terminal here, you link it to the entire system. But what's the different? This is obviously the same function like the one before. So like exactly this one here, the difference is finally here, you just are uh, obliged that uh, you have potential free contacts. With a formal one, you have, uh, listen carefully, starting from 10 up to 230. Here, in this case, with this one here, just try contacts, potential free inputs. Otherwise, you will definitely destroy them. These ones here, you can, this cabling here, this you can extend up to 30 meters, three zero. So that means this gives you really rather wide uh, functions of the application. You can control, for instance, if all windows are closed, however, because of these, let's say, the desire, uh, the dimensions, for instance, of this push button interface, you can hide it somewhere, but you can control in this case, eight different windows totally separately, if you want. And um, yeah, we come close to the end of the introduction of um, these products. And we do have, since a couple of months, let's say push button interface, a push button uh, uh, series, which is called in our case, the 
Eon series available in KNX as well as available in smart home solutions like Luxor Living. We do have here, for instance, the Eon 8, super slim, super flat, bus communication. That's it. We do not need more. You just need to have the frame here. Show here the frame. There are some, some hooks. You have here, let's say, small hooks as well. You have just to do it like that. I show it in the, in the camera. You just have to care about the hooks here from the bottom side. And then you click it in in, the, in such a way. And that's it. Super flat. And that's that's the space what you need finally for the operation. And if you want to add another one, so as a double uh, a push button, you just clip it in here with the hooks and then with a slight press and then the fixation is done. And you see this is how it can look like. Nice appearance and a high functionality which these push button interfaces are giving to you. We can do, for instance, um, let's say multiple functions, switching, dimming, calling up scenarios. For instance, these uh, we do have here in these uh, appliances, we do have here status LEDs, which you can adjust however you like it, um, if you want. We do have here in the Eon 8, not just push button up and down. Thank you so much to the dashboard. We, you do not have just up and down. You do have as well, you discover here, pointer to the right, pointer to the left. So that means you can scroll through this display here and call up different functions which you have pre-adjusted, pre-set. How many? Good question. The Eon series, the Eon 8, offers you or gives you finally the ability to integrate up to 10 different functions. You call it up, like here, for instance, you have here in German expression, Deckenleuchte means it's the ceiling light. Currently, it is to 60%, so it is a dimmer. If you press on the right-hand side here, so you discover here the symbol or the icon, for instance, for shutters and blinds. So then if you press here on the right-hand side, so then the application blinds will come into the into the center, and then with the up and with the down, you can blue you can move the blinds up and down however you like it, or you click on the left hand side, then this function will pop up. Probably this is this um, this uh, light, this standing light in your living room, which is controlled from uh, the socket point, and uh, so you can do with the up and with the down, switch on and switch off, or display some other. In a KNX application, okay, tremendously more, 20 different functions, color control, and so on. This we can't support currently with the Luxor Living solution, but by far more than enough for a private home, private villa to control all desired functions. And all the functions are concentrated on one point with the ION 8. You have not to put five or 10 of these, let's say, standard, um, standard push buttons here among each other or underneath each other, you can put it all in one unit and you can control it from one, sp one spot or one point in your building. Here we have um, already talked about, so this is this uh, for multiple flats. And um, now we come really close to that point when we do, let's say, uh, our practical part. And in this case, so please um, pardon me, so just, I have just the, the German ones, but uh, we do have here a training, a training case, a demo case, which we offer to our um, yeah, schools, training centers, and so on. Especially they start with their smart home education this year in 2021. So that means um, they need equipment. We do have equipment for that. And this equipment finally is CE approved. So that means all the security safety aspects have been proven. We got the approval for it. And what you discover here, we have here a full package here. We do have this one in life. This is exactly this uh, training demo. And with this, we can do smart home solution, looks or living. We do have here the sketch of, uh, for instance, of a single family home. So you discover here different rooms. Outdoor weather station, we do have here some um, blinds or the simulation of the blinds. We do have here some actuators where we can, for instance, uh, test manually. So what kind of um, 
functions uh, is, for instance, applied to channel 2, 3, 1, and so on. We do have uh, the dimmer. Here we can do it in stages, for instance, uh, the dimming manually and up and down the blinds in this case. So you discover here on that side, I do it just manually without any programming. So we can do, for instance, things like that. So and with this demo case, we do now a short introduction. In this demo case, if required, we can do as well a setup just with KNX products. So if you have interest in such kind of uh, training equipment, so don't hesitate and contact our partners in the area with, who are responsible for you, supporting you in the last couple of years. As well, I don't, I don't want to miss to highlight, we do have here different, let's say, packages, so sets of uh, different K uh, um, smart home appliances, for instance. Here we do have here the big, the big one, which is uh, the one implement, uh, included, for instance, uh, the drives for stores, blinds, so that means we have actuators inside. You see here the entire package, this, um, the IP1, the communication. We do have here the weather station, we do have here um, a certain amount of push button interfaces, power supply, actuators, specially made for control of window gardens or shadings and so on. Okay, that's enough of, uh, yeah, let's say theory. And now I want to start the, the practical part. So the practical part for this purpose, I need to link now to my demo case. So and in my demo case, in this demo case here, we do have here inside a small router and the router is a part of the demo case. And that's the reason why I do not need any kind of, let's say, cabling, LAN cabling and so on, because here inside there is a LAN router. You find here the access code for the LAN router and uh, I did already. So that means now I link it I link my system, uh, my computer now to the system. And um, meanwhile, while starting up, I open the um, software, the looks of plug software. Uh, the looks of plug software you'll find as well on our webpage on looks of living. Scroll down for installers, and there uh, you will definitely find uh, the software for 64 bits version, for instance. And you will find there as well the Luxor Play software, Play for Windows. And this puts you in a position that you can later on, I will do so, that you can control later on with your laptop, for instance, your entire building. So first of all, I got uh, a good hint. Yeah, it would be really polite to you. Totally right. So to modify the language into English language, and you discover here, by the way, there are different languages available. So in this case, that all of us can follow. So I put it into English, thanks to the control panel, to the control board. Christoph, thanks so much, really attentive. And uh, for instance, test, I just name it test demo 2021. So you can name it, you can give the name of the owner, you can give here the type in the name of the installer. Uh, when you did it, when you start the project and so on. And then you go one step further and one step further, it opens automatically the um, directory where you want to st store, where you want to file this project which you are doing not in, uh, now. I put it on the desktop in my case, but it's up to you to give the reasonable, let's say, link to the directory which you want to know. So we do have here the different um, options. Either you configure just, uh, let's say, first of all, without any devices, or you, ha you are directly in the project. And I double check now if I'm really linked to the system. Yes, I am. I'm linked to it. So and now I click on here and I just start now to send a search to the system. Now safety yeah you need to know the password in our case uh, as a default it is taben and um, we do need 
Uh, what is the problem now? So it is linked, yes. Now I send the query. And again, probably it was a mistyping from my side. Could not be established. Please check the interface settings. This is cruel now. Um, download, sorry for this short trouble. Um, cancel. One step ahead. So, uh, want to proceed without loading? Yes, I want. I just have to double check here the set the interface 169. Okay. <clears throat> and then back to the system. System. Load the system. So, I'll try again. What's up now? What is up now? I checked it. I checked it. IP config before starting. Yep, yeah, I'm missing right. 61 zero. Okay, this is laptop and um, ping once one six nine point. Uh, 192.168.0.100 must be 101 is a laptop. Yeah, I get the reply from the system. Yeah, so <clears throat> you know, probably a new boot is sometimes required. So I have access to the system, probably with a change of the language. I don't know exactly. Be frank. So I open now the recent project, which is my test demo. And I start again, load the system and second try. So, okay, you see new boot and everything is fine or seems to be fine. <clears throat> so, and now we have to wait a short moment, depends on how big size the project finally is. What happens in the meanwhile, you see, this ring is giving you, let's say, a ring, and uh, the ring is green. And as long as the ring, the, the ring is blinking here, so it sends finally the system here sends a query to the wiring here inside and to the demo case. So who is there? Yeah. So that means what kind of actuators are there? What kind of appliances? For instance, the weather station is there. For instance, here is uh, the push button. I mean, uh, the the Eon, the the push button. Uh, in uh, the, all the dimmers and so on, and all them, all these appliances, they get their own physical address. Yeah, you have not to press any push button and all that stuff. Forget this; it's given automatically. Yeah, and when this short address is given to each of these devices, so then automatically they give the system a reply. Okay, I get a short address. I am a weather station. I get a short address and I am a push button. Yeah, I am. A, I got a short address and I am, for instance, a switching actuator here down in the demo case. So they give actively the reply to the system and you will see later on in a couple of seconds listed on the right hand side what the system has discovered. So it's for you in if you have uh, in, in, the, in the touch point um, of you when you are a system integrator, for instance. So um, you probably know you have um, affiliated or put 10 of these devices in your system, but you discover there are just nine and you know exactly in the list now, so which appliance is missing, you know exactly at which point you have to double check, for instance, if the wiring is uh, probably not okay, a cable is broken or probably not applied uh, to the to the um, uh, to the system, so this up to you. I think this is some of the yeah, let's say good tools as well. So for you as a system integrator, as an installer, to double check if really all of them are there. So if you press now on the let's say first the stick. So this is currently a German expression, and 
you want to name it first floor, for instance, you can do it if you like. So with this pencil, you can. Now you want to uh, add, for instance, an addition, uh, the rooms now. So for instance, in the first floor, you have a bedroom, just drag, drop. There you have a bathroom, drag and drop it. There is a separate laboratory, drag and drop it. You have some, for instance, uh, some floors, corridors, drag and drop it. And assuming in the first floor, uh, probably you have a, a, a living room. Yeah. If you want to rename the living room, take the pencil, click on here, rename it. If you want to, to, name, uh, to give another name on that, can do it. If you want to give another icon, for instance, click on that, take another icon, and you can do it. Uh, you can do it a little bit more universally, individually. However, yeah, that's it. Deactivate this, and then click in the room, and now white sheet of paper. So what now? What now? So what you have to do now? Finally, you put the function here, and you have, for instance, the required function here, and you need to have the blinds, for instance, for the function in the living room. Yes. And for instance, you do have here the heating. Um, okay, but now you miss some, right? So I've forgotten some, and this is something which you need to know, system. And we do have here our, let's say our list. And um, the list finally, the device list we do have here. I've forgotten to tell you, but you see, you can do it later on if you do same same like me. You can, or do you have to put now this, for instance, into your list, in that you can use it later on for your programming, for your projecting. However, yeah. So that's the way how you do it. So if green, okay, they are existing. All these appliances are giving you in real text. So what is their main basic functionality? <clears throat> and if, for instance, you want to know, so who is who? So we do have here, for instance, this um, loop. And that means if I press, in this case, the programming push button of um, the um, shutters and blinds actuator, so you discover here, in this listing here, oh, okay, this is now blue. So this must be exactly this actuator, which is in my DB board. You deactivate it by, again, pressing the programming push button. Yeah, but what if you have, for instance, a push button or a push button interface? What if? Because mostly these small fancy push buttons here, push button interfaces, are hidden somewhere behind a push button. So do I have to open all that? No, you don't have. You take just the push buttons. You, you need to know where, which kind of push buttons are uh, linked or, or uh, yeah, affiliated to the push button interface. And if you do the double click three times, you discover here as well. So the blue, the TR8, the third from the bottom, um, is um, lighting up in blue. So I click again, and then you know exactly these push buttons here linked to this push button interface. So this is exactly the push button interface, which is listed here. OK, I think this is a quite good tool. And then you can, again, if you want to rename it, just click on here. This is, for instance, DB board, um, the S8. And this is for, don't know, for the living, dining, and floor area. So you know exactly, so for which purpose exactly this eight-fold switching actuator finally is. It's up to you. You can rename it however you like it. Okay. So done, so now back to the room. I open this, okay, you see some differences. Okay, that's why. So you have to apply this firstly, but you can do it. If you have missed it, you see, you can do it. There's always a track back. So if I click now here on this switch function and what you discover, so before 
it was heating. Yeah, why? I have activated the heating function and I just get listed all the appliances which are related to the heating. Yeah, if I want to start with the switching, for instance, just the to the switching function related products are listed here. So I take in this case, just double check. Um, it must be, yes, is is C7 in the living room. So I take now here the C7 and I drop it here on this area. Left hand side always they are the actuators. And the naming, what I type in here is, for instance, um, the naming, the wording, which finally is used later on for the app, for the app surface, for the app uh, operation. Okay. All the other functions I uh, don't activate currently. I just want to make you acquainted with uh, these touch points. So what you have to do first, you have probably later on enough time because I will show you, you can do it as a demo as well, uh, or can use it as a demo as well. And uh, now what, how you can do it. So I take just for instance, this C1, this is a binary input. And I take this for instance, for the central off. The central off, if you want to rename it, in my case, because I have too late turned from German to English. So you can rename it in your country language, language if you like. So you have just now to confirm it and that's it. C2, you want to support the panic function. Yes, the hook is automatically set. Yes. So then C3, let's start with this one here. So this is the third push button here on the right hand side. So I take this one here, drop it here, and this frame here where you can type in a name, this is just for you probably as orientation. This is uh, next main door or so where you have, for instance, installed. That's it. If you have just a switch, not a push button, so motion means it's a switch, push button means it's a push button or toggle function. Okay, just to describe it once. So then we do have here a dimming function. I click on that and out of the sudden it turns to just dimming supporting applications functions. So that means the C2 must be the living room, but it's dining. C1 is living room. So that means I take the C1, I drop it here. And this is for instance, dim lights because I know I'm in the living room. Dim light, let's say sofa, at a sofa area or so, okay? Here you can adjust the dimming curves, especially for LEDs. And here you can adjust, for instance, the time from zero to 100%. And this could be probably sometimes a troubleshooter in the event of you have a LED who is rather fast from zero to 100%. So it becomes difficult for you or for the end user to find, let's say, a dimmable value between 20 and uh, 60 or 70% because the dimming curve is too fast. If you adjust it here to a longer, longer term or longer time frame, okay, it was too fast, longer time frame, and you, uh, sorry, what's the dimming? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Okay, this was my fault currently because I clicked too fast. <clears throat> so, and if you put it, for instance, to six seconds, so then the dimming curve is stretched a little bit. It takes a longer time, but the dimming around um, for this, let's say, for, for this LED takes longer time, but for the end user, it's by far better to find the reasonable, let's say, dimming value in percent in between. I've forgotten to click, okay, that was the reason why it uh, was uh, deleted immediately. You need as well a trigger. So that means I do have here a trigger. I leave it, I do not name it. That's it. Double checking here. So what in the event of uh, panic or of uh, central off, what happens? You see this switching light, there is a hook participating in central off and in panic. It's okay so far. The dimmer, if I click on here, participates as well in the same functions. Okay, I do have here now the blinds function and the blinds, I take here, this one here, it's uh, for instance, terrace, south. <clears throat> this is uh, the runtime. 
which you have once uh, to set. It is uh, approximately eight, it's 10, okay, then 10. So 10 seconds, it's okay. Okay, this one should be definitive. Ah, what is this? So, oh, and again, it is 10 and click in the next, now, okay, now it runs. Okay, it should participate, for instance, in wind alarm. And okay, then I need to apply, for instance, the second blind. This is, for instance, the south westerly side. <clears throat> Same setting, so I forget this at the moment, you know how it works. So, and now I need, for instance, another, let's say, drive to open or to close these blinds, especially for that purpose, I, I use here, for instance, this uh, push button interface on the right hand side. Uh, please have now a careful, um, yeah, let's say, look on that. So we have here C1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. I take here C1 and I drop it here. And we have a look again. So you discover C2 is missing as well. So in this case, when it comes to, let's say, drive blinds and so on, so just the up and the down, down, and uh, is automatically taken as uh, the double push button. So that means we take always two, one up, one down, because the system knows to operate, to control blinds up and down, we always need the couple. And that's the reason why it operates like that. Same stuff like here, T C2, C3, I take just C3. And same stuff, down, and we do have here the up, and then immediately we will do the programming. <clears throat> so thing is done, you know how it works. The heating, easy to imagine. If you want to integrate a heating, you do same stuff. You have here a room sensor, and room sensor means this is a temperature sensor, and you have just to drop it exactly in this area, and then the heating will run as well. Okay, you know, I think you grabbed it, how it works. Uh, the weather station automatically is uh, implemented in the project. Here you can do the things accordingly, so the settings of the position of the blinds, um, at, what, at what, let's say, threshold it shall start, south, west, and probably east side or north side, however, it's up to you. Here you can adjust the things individually. So I go back now and go to the system and decide now, yes, I want to download the system. I go here to start and now the system starts configuring. So that means all what I did, it's just drag, drop, drag, drop to adjust probably some, let's say a handful of uh, application settings, so time settings of the runtime of the blinds, for instance, or probably you have to adjust the blind, uh, the, the dimming curve, all the other things are just drag drop. And I'm pretty sure that you can manage it. And uh, after a while, all these product data now are automatically sent to the project. And again, you know what I'm doing, I'm just talking. Yeah, I just transceive transfer the data from my computer through the router to the system and the system is configured. I have not to run through the project to press a program button and to download and go to the next pro, um, product and press a pro, program button and further on. So you just can enjoy a cup of coffee, cup of water, however, have a chat with uh, the owner of the house or with, I uh, don't know, so you have, it's your time now. And when <clears throat> downloaded, so this can take a while. This is probably now the quality of uh, the RF signal <clears throat> can take a while, depends on how huge your project is. So one minute approximately could it take time and then the program is downloaded. Again, so this is really a pretty simple way to do, let's say, a smart home. It is not the, let's say, the system on its own. So that means that the appliances are smart. You can do things with them. They can, they share automatically data among them, uh, them 
uh, and so on. So he says, well, the smartness of the software which you can get. And the good, uh, let's say, message to you is finally the software is for free. Yeah, that means you can download it from our webpage. You have to register or you can register. It's up to you. There is a small uh, drop box where you can put your hook in if you want to be registered. Then you are regularly updated by, by us. Uh, in the uh, event of, let's say, news, new products, new details, software updates, and so on, and further on. And um, yeah, this is up to you. The thing is, and this I want to use now, is finally the Windows uh, Play software, which is generated now automatically after the download is uh, finished. So I just have to click again on the computer and uh, then the surface of the application to operate finally, to manage this project is uh, then, then converted automatically into an app style. And this app style finally puts you in a position you can do with the Android, with the iOS, or with a Windows-based uh, computer, and you can manage your home comfortably. Yeah, quite simple, quite easy. And it's difficult now for me to talk, yeah, to talk further on because it is today, frank speaking, it's rather, rather slow. But uh, in general, it works a little bit faster, a little bit more, with more performance. But okay, it's not me. You discover it. It's just currently the yeah, reception of uh, the Wi Fi network currently. Yeah. And by the way, don't forget. So these, all these, let's say, flash monitor activators are supporting secure as well. So you can be safe that your neighbor, for instance, who you make fancy, for instance, about the system, is not able to have access, have any kind of touch points to your system. So if everything was going fine now, you discover here, for instance, that with this panic, I can switch on. I have, for instance, here the options to dim the system. And we do have here, in this case, we do have here the shutter splines up and down. Okay, there is currently some blocked. So let's open, <coughs> let's open the... Um, looks or play and uh, now we convert it immediately because time is uh, elapsing as well. So I confirm now or I convert now <clears throat> the entire project through the prepare for looks or play and the looks or play finally <clears throat> converts now all the function, these small fancy functions now into the surface automatically. Again, you see, I, have, I keep my hands open and up because I do not do anything, just talking, and the rest is finally created by the software. Transmission project files successfully. Okay, fine, good to hear. So then I close it. I do have here my Luxor Play, which is installed. And this is finally the shape, the, the cut, which uh, you need for Android or for uh, iOS. I link in as an administrator, the basic password finally is uh, again uh, here as well, Taben. You see here, test demo 2021. And uh, okay, you discover here what is the mistake or what is the trouble, why can't uh, override. That's the reason why you discover here now. So that means I have definitively switched off now the, the dimming. I open now the rooms, in this case my living room, and you discover here, ah, okay, the light is on, and if you move now the slider down, you should discover as well on the device that this light here definitely now has dimmed down, or for instance, you can switch, uh, switch here to a scene, you can adjust here as well some scenes, but uh, here we do have, uh, let's say, more specified, more detailed, uh, 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 how can I say videos, tutorials? If I want to move, uh, for instance, the terrace, you discover here on the demo kit, so the blinds are running 
down now and if everything works fine so it should run up so in, in the event of wind is popping up you discover here now the blinds are running up on their own yeah last but not least so just if you are eager to know for instance so how the current situation is for instance try if uh, the wetness of my fingers is uh, high enough yep it's good enough so for instance in the event of rain then you get here uh, on your app the information so currently it is raining the brightness for instance this is uh, the brightness situation currently if i cover it for instance here on that side so after a few seconds you discover here as well so on the right hand side the sensor now gets some shading and that's what happens here you see it is quite easy rather fast in general yeah i talked too much i know it's like any time but um okay i hopefully could give you a short reasonable let's say insight of uh, let's say looks a living what it is what you can do with it some insights which definitely you do not find on our web page on the marketing side that was the reason why i shared these details these insights with you uh, warmly recommended watch on our um, service side on uh, our web page scroll down there are plenty of um, specific uh, looks or living videos tutorials describing email access camera integration google assistance multiple weather stations and so on you will find a lot of details there accordingly hopefully you had some interesting insights Hopefully you appreciated the time sharing with us as partner, as follower of the Taben uh, webinars. And I look warmly welcome uh, forward to that. We will see us soon and have a good weekend to you. Okay. Okay, I got, uh, got the insight from the dashboard. Some of them. We do have default settings, but the new update of the Luxo Play allows us to adjust uh, in shading. So, which in the event of the shading, which position after reset should be taken, for instance, if I'm not wrong. So, that's uh, that was the last one. Startup after power loss, <clears throat> you discover here. <clears throat> I do now the following. <clears throat> this is um, now I have a power loss disconnected. <clears throat> it takes one, two, three, and now I'm able to switch again. So it's just a matter of more or less same time, like we do have with KNX or with others, you have to be on board again um, within approximately one second in general. RF devices can work without secure code, sure, it's not mandatory, you can operate like that. And um, download project from uh, and insert it into now. The, um, can we download the project from Luxor Living and insert directly into KNX? No, you can use the products, yes, um, with a KNX, uh, with a certified database from Luxor Living, but you can't import the entire project into currently into a real KNX um, project. Yes, that's right. Uh, it was a halogen lamp. We can dim halogen lamps, sure. No problem at all. So we support both. When the light, it was off and push button for dim up, the light stay off. I had to do first a short press to open the light and then something wrong. No, it's a, uh, it's specified, and I think uh, Christopher had answered already. So these are all the, the questions which have been popped up. Okay, so hopefully we can support you in a reasonable way. If there are further uh, questions, don't hesitate to get in touch with us, either with the telephone hotlines or hotline at teben.de. My staff in the hotline is really well educated and can give you per email or <clears throat> if you like by landline 
or mobile uh, the reasonable answers or in the event we are not in front or in this case behind the camera uh, so you can touch anytime um, you can, can 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 come in touch with us anytime okay so take good care and um, looking forward to see you next time bye bye